Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here, and today I have a playthrough of The Banishing. This one uh, from a couple of years ago from designer Sean Rumble, published by WizKids Games. I recently talked about The Banishing in a top 10 card games list that I did with Rado. Uh, go ahead and check out Rado's channel for uh, my full list of t uh, card games. A lot of cooperative games made that list. Not every uh, game that I showed was cooperative, but enough were. And this is definitely one of them. It is a kind of fishing style game. Uh, think a game like Casino if you like classic card play, where I am going to be playing one of three characters, at least in solo. This game goes from three to six. Controlling three characters and using my cards and manipulating the center, I'm going to be firing off powers and I'm going to be dealing with monsters and eventually I am going to banish some cards and that will represent the game's win condition. I have to banish 10 cards. That's very, very difficult. Very mathy puzzle. Uh, enemies are abound in this deck as I go through it. Be going through it three times and that'll be the win condition. So this is one of my favorite games uh, in terms of like a hidden gem, very small package. You know, it's basically only a deck of cards and these and these um, these larger player mats. Uh, but it's so like rich with strategy and using the powers and geometric thinking, uh, taking the right cards and, you know, mitigating harm. I just I really dig this game when I mentioned it. Uh, during the list with Rado, I'm like, you know what? I haven't played that in a long time. I've been playing <laughs> two, three, four straight games, and I said, you know what? Let me fire up the camera and get a play on the One Stop Co-op Shop. Uh, it might be my pleasure. But before I get started with the playthrough for The Banishing, I would like to share about the One Stop Co-op Shop. We are a gaming empire. Uh, please go ahead and check us out. Our community is the heart of what we do, and it is on Discord. Uh, so on Discord, you can join the One Stop Co-op Shop. You can check for the link to the Discord in the notes of this very video. It is an amazing community with friendly people. Uh, moderated very well, uh, so not a lot of uh, that usual internet nonsense. We are a very loving and supportive place to be, especially if you love solo and cooperative games, new games, old games, the LCGs, rare games like this one. Uh, please join the conversation. You can join our Patreon for increased tiers, increased access, but joining the Discord uh, itself is completely free and you get access to about 90% of the channels. The YouTube is here. Go ahead and subscribe to the video, like, uh, or subscribe to the channel, like the video. Uh, our streaming channel is at a thousand subscribers as I record this, which is an excellent little feat. Uh, so please go ahead and check out Steve and Peter and the efforts that they're going. Uh, they are doing live plays and they also have designers pop by. It's a really, really cool channel. Go ahead and check it out. We also have the podcast. Uh, we have over 200 episodes, so a huge back catalog of game coverage and twice per week uh, ongoing. Uh, sometimes once a week because we can't keep up the pace, but we love games so much that it's been twice a week uh, for a little while now, and we have a lot, a lot of fun. So please go ahead and check out uh, the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. So here is a quick and dirty run through of the rules for the banishing. So it is a game for three to six players. I have a three player game laid out and I'm gonna play all three characters for solo. There's alternate rules that the designers have been playing with in terms of playing fewer characters at a lower player count. But I'm just going off of what is in the box right now, which is three players and it's fine. Uh, it's actually, uh, it looks a little bit intimidating because there's three player mats, but I find that once you get into it, they're easy, uh, fairly easy to run, especially because this game has no AI. It's just you versus the board over here. And so I find that the lower overhead there uh, kind of helps out in terms of keeping track of the three characters. So that's cool. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you are the characters. There are eight of them. They're basically fantasy riffs so the sorcerer the bard the cleric the healer uh the fighter the, all, all kinds of regular fantasy tropes they are going to have some health up here the sorcerer is weenie <laughs> uh there are characters that are definitely stronger than the sorcerer and they have powers listed here this is the core of your player board you're going to be acquiring cards and using these powers so in the game has two phases, which is the acquisition of cards in the first phase, and then the firing off of powers in the second phase. So 
As I acquire cards, this is called the void over here. I can choose a row or a column. So as a couple of things that I have uh, to consider when taking cards, if you take symbols, they just go into your hand. So if you really need to fire off a power, or if you just don't feel like you can take a lot of wounds, then you want to uh, try to acquire just symbols and uh, going on about your day. There are monsters here of various strength. So as you can see, there are two hit point, three hit points, and the little guy right there, one hit point. So if I acquire a, a monster, they go into my player area as wounds. So if I wanted, so if I'm the sorcerer and I wanted to acquire this row, I'd be fine. If I acquired this row, then these will go into my hand and that would represent one wound. Every character has a stamina value and an overall health total. The sorcerer can absorb this much stem, uh, this many wounds before it has to flip. So then if it absorbs three wounds, it would flip. And as you can see, it is a depowered uh, area. So you can't really fire off your powers. You absolutely do not want to <laughs> spend any time over here or like minimal time as possible because this sucks. Uh, to be on this side, uh, if you do acquire wounds, you want to try to figure out ways to heal. I'll get to that in just a second. If you uh, take this many wounds, which is your health, you die and the game is over. The game ends once one player uh, takes that many that amount of wounds. But let's say I didn't want to do that. Let's say I wanted to just uh, you know fire off a power, and I would just take these cards and I'll put them in my hand. I would have placed them immediately in the void off of the deck. And then it play would proceed to phase two, which is the firing off of a power. So as you can see, there are three colors. Generally, these are attack spells that deal with undead. This is support, you know, healing, defense, and that kind of thing. And this is board manipulation. And this uh, blue is everyone has the banished power. I'll get to that in just a second. So then I want to fire off a red power because I have some red cards. So then if I were to cast these mismatched uh, symbols, I can cast the lesser of the powers, which in which the case this is transmute, swap an undead with a card from a discard. So I don't have a discard yet because of the first turn of the game, but I would uh, take one of these, if I had a discard, swap it out probably the three because it's the strongest and bring on a card uh, from the discard. If, and this is what I was looking at, I match the three symbols, and there's only three symbols, circle, uh, square, and triangle, I would be able to fire off either one of these, the weak power or the strong power. Fireball, discard four adjacent cards from the, from the void, two by two square, boom! Gonna do that. So I'm gonna discard these three cards, and then I'm gonna hit right there. Boom, 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 boom. Get out of here, sucker. <laughs> And then immediately, because the void ha cannot be empty, it would be replaced with more cards. So first turn, card acquisition. Second turn, firing off of powers. And then pass turn. So I demonstrated uh, an action that's in terms of uh, this just uh, what he can do. Uh, there are more powers, uh, but there are also these, these regular powers, which happen whether you're wounded or not. You can uh, swap any two void cards. Let's say you want to set somebody else up to be able to get something else. So I could do that. And then let the next player acquire this powerful set of cards. I can trade cards or I can rest, which is in case I had a wound, I would discard the lowest level wound. That could be useful in case I need to flip back from the wounded side to the regular side. The ultimate power, the way that the game progresses in terms of its end game always comes for every single character so as you can see you have a power over here uh, place a card from the void to the banishing uh, play a card into the banishing <laughs> every single uh, player has this in terms of their ultimate blue spell and that's how you win the game you uh, every character can do it and when uh, they put cards to the banishing we're going to add those up and when we hit 10 cards you are going to be the winner of the game Another thing that you can do is you can acquire items. There's wands, there's shields and uh, armor. Uh, that's just kind of temporary powers. They aren't that powerful, but you know, they uh, come in handy from time to time. 
Uh, I This is an old copy of mine, and I actually can't find a couple of my cards, my armor cards. Uh, there should be six, uh, two of each. Right now I have four. So you can, I can play the normal game. Uh, the harder game has two, so I can play the harder game. But the introductory game, if I just want to get somebody in there, has six. Uh, the two wands, two armor, and two shield. I am missing a couple of cards, so I'm really mad about that. <laughs> that has nothing to do with you as a player. I'm just, uh, I just took this out and I'm so upset that I'm missing two cards. I hope that people out there can commiserate with my pain. I am almost ready to begin a playthrough, but there are two more uh, minor rules to keep track of. So this is, uh, I've just laid out the three characters in a different way. They're gonna be acquiring cards. Uh, eight card is the maximum hand size. So if they end their turn with eight cards, then they have to discard down to eight. So you, you can get uh, more cards as long as you use them uh, throughout your turn. Then, uh, so this deck is going to run out as I fill the void over and over again. When I have to reshuffle, then I shuffle in these stronger monsters. Uh, this is no good. <laughs> uh, by the second round, uh, by the second round through the deck, you're going to be uh, progressing much slower because it'll be much harder to do. So you're going to do a lot of banishings early during that first round, and then during the third and final round. Uh, you are going to shuffle in the fives. So uh, once you get to that point, it's basically impossible to win unless you are right there with your banisher. So that is the rules. Now I'm ready to begin. All right, so I'm ready to begin the playthrough. I have laid out three characters like this, and I'm going to be rotating. Uh, this middle one will be the active player. I'll kind of have them inset a little bit uh, to highlight that. The reason I show all three characters and I will do so throughout the uh, playthrough, is that the, the hands matter. This is a highly cooperative game. It's going to be setting your partners up all the time, so I want the uh, audience to be able to see all the cards at once so that we can, you know, kind of play uh, together a little bit, and you can see what mistakes I make. <laughs> uh, but the first play is going to be with the Brute. So this is an obvious play. The Brute keys off of wounds, so they are going to take wounds... And then we are going to replace the cards in the banishing. Ugh, that's no good. Uh, so I just went from top to bottom. That's how I was supposed to deal it. Uh, so what the brute frenzy power is, they can take uh, matching symbols, go on to discard that. And for every wound they have, and they have one wound, they can discard a monster. Get out of here. Three, the strongest monster out there, replaced by a weenie. Sweet. And that's turn. <laughs> uh, on to the next one. All right, so the next turn is the Bard. Uh, the Bard has cards laying over there, but his green power tends to key off of wound or uh, people healing wounds. Don't have a lot of wounds on the board yet, so I'm going to leave that for the Sorcerer, and I'm going to take this row of cards right there. Reason being that I start to acquire two blue now. In order to be able to cast a spell, let's go ahead right there. Ooh, wow. Uh, better do some banishings right away now. So instead of doing a power and wasting cards, the bard is going to use the rest ability and is going to just uh, get rid of this wound uh, right when he got it. So that is the entire bard's turn. They have two squares for their banish power and... Sorry about that. And they have a third square lying there, and they're going to try to do their banish uh, po power next turn. All right, so it is time for the Sorcerer. I think I'm going to hold these cards for a little bit of clarity. Uh, all right, so not really working on too much. I could start acquiring uh, these triangles over here, but I think I can wait a turn and maybe let, the, let someone rearrange it so I can take two of them, uh, two blue symbols. But for now, I am going to take these three, and you always replace immediately more squares. Not a lot of monsters so far. Actually gonna use this immediately. The sorcerer says, enchant, create a shield by placing a card from your hand into any player's shield slot. Going to use it on myself because it, but <laughs> the sorcerer is by far the weakest character here. A shield item it allows a one-time block of a wound. So let's say on a future turn, I'm forced to take this three. I could block it with the shield, and that would be my turn. So the sorcerer has fortified themselves for later. 
All right, so the brute is next. They have these two cards. I could go for that circle to get there uh, uh, going, but I don't think I need to rely on the brute so much for um, banishing, or maybe that'll come uh, uh, later organically. What I want to do, though, is continue to acquire wounds and eventually build up that cool power where I could, uh, I could really start wiping the board uh, because he discards wounds for each, or discards monster for each wounds he has. So if I get another red triangle, I can really do some damage. So that's really cool. Get that, more monsters. Wow, there is so much blue out there. So I can't really do much with the cards in my hand. Matter of fact, I can't do anything with the cards in my hand. So I can either swap, trade, or rest. I don't think I have anything that anyone else is interested in right now. So right now, if the bard took a card, it would, well, he could take the, the bard could take from the middle. So that would be okay. So let me go ahead and set this up. The bard would be able to at least uh, continue matching. So he'd take the blue and have a couple of, um, a blue square and have a couple of blue swirls available to him. All right, so the bard's gonna go now. That's what their hand looks like. I have the two blue and I have that third blue over here. No way I'm gonna take the, the column over there. I'm gonna take the row. Thank you, Barbarian, for setting me up for the next uh, fight. Going to replace it. Ooh, green swirly, that's excellent. See if I get another green swirly. No, I'm not that lucky because the bard's banish power, which is perform, play all green swirlies from the void into the banishing. I'm not gonna mess around them in my max hand size anyway, which is eight, so I get the ultimate matching. And now I have a card that is going to go into the banishing. Uh, I'll keep track of that on the side, but know that I have one card in the banishing so far. I am one-tenth of the way towards victory. Sweet. And another swirly. Let's see if I can somehow get another blue swirly into the bard's hand. The brute has one, so maybe I can execute a trade and then get another swirly. And if I get a third green swirly, I'd be really sitting pretty. All right, so where's the sorcerers go? Doesn't have too much going on in their hand right now. Uh, doesn't have too much available because there's some uh, <laughs> there's some buildup up on that board over there, so I don't like that. But I'm going to take this column. I'm going to use my acquired shield and use that to block this three incoming. I am going to take a wound. That's not bad. And then I'm going to take my second triangle. Hopefully the sorcerer can get there. Uh, their banished going and their banished is actually the easiest banished of all uh, play the lowest level undead from the void to the banishing you definitely want to make sure that there's like a stronger one of the than a one on there when you do that that takes out one of the monsters so that's okay uh, I'm gonna just look forward to that in the future uh, if I get that uh, triangle right there definitely gonna try to do what I can so I am going to, with the sorcerer, who can't do much, heal their wound. Definitely want to do as much healing as possible with the sorcerer, keep them clean, and I don't have other stuff to do. So I'm happy to have that be the sorcerer's turn. All right, it is time for the brute. The brute has these two triangles, which that's very tempting. So my options here, I can either go this way, uh, take this wound, which would bring you to four wounds, his stamina is five. That would be really unfortunate. Or I can go this way, take the one wound, and kind of clear things out for the bard. The bard's going to be able to do a banishing uh, next turn. So I might want to set that up. So uh, although I think, hmm, actually, yeah, I, I can't go this way because I need to leave this circle for the bard, which is why I'm showing all the cards. <laughs> Uh, that way you can go through my thought process. So it looks like I'm just going to go that way. I would love to do that and get that third uh, triangle, but I think it'll be there for me next time. And uh, that would that would uh, make the brute uh, inoperable, which is unacceptable. <laughs> that is not an acceptable thing that we can allow. So more, 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 more monsters. 
All right, so what do I have in my hand? I have three green, oh, sorry about that. I have three green, uh, a mismatch, and if I use those, um, I would be able to draw a card for each wound I have, discard any um, undead that I get. That's not bad. Actually, I'd be able to draw three cards, and if I draw some undead, I'd be able to discard and basically kill them. It would make the game go a little bit faster, but I think, uh, you know, relative to my hand that I don't really have any much better to do. Um, and, you know, because of the eight, eight card limit, you have to always kind of do something. So I'm going to draw three cards and I'm going to discard three monsters. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that was basically a kill shot right there. Fantastic work, Brute. All right. So the bard is going to go. Remember that their banish ability, and I only have one card banish, so I really need to get this going, but their banish ability is to place green circles into the void. That doesn't do me any good right now. So he has five cards, all kind of a mishmash, mixed match, uh, not really uh, too much going on over here, but I am going to take this row. That's a wound. I now have... Uh, seven cards all over the place. That is no good. Um, but at least I have the two circles uh, working on that a little bit. And he's going to spend his turn healing uh, that wound. Oh, I should probably do that. Ooh, okay. Well, now we're, uh, now we're looking pretty good. All right. Looks like the sorcerer only really has one move. This is unfortunate. I mean, it's just... <laughs> You want to do everything. There's there's not much that I can pull off. So I did want to leave a couple of things around, but uh, it looks like I am going to be stuck if I really want to take the triangle, which I do. Taking these other blues, that's not optimal. But that's I have some trading powers that I haven't been doing. Let me go top to bottom like I've been doing. Uh, that's good. That's a green circle. That looks like a potential um, discard fodder. So then I'm going to use the powerful banishing spell of the sorcerer. Banish, play the lowest level undead uh, from the void into the banishing. So we are going to do that. And I can pick my two depending on what is the next one. I'm actually going to do this one so that that would clear the brute to be able to take this and do a little bit more stuff. Great, uh, and he'll have access to another blue circle. Uh, that will come in handy eventually. Very nice. And the sorcerer has this left in his hand. All right, I can't do everything, but I can certainly do a lot. <laughs> the brute is going to go this way. They are going to use uh, that frenzy power that you've seen before. Well, first of all, let me go ahead and do that ooh, finally got some armor got the items going uh, that's definitely going to be the sorcerer eventually i'm going to try to set up for that i'm going to use three get those together and for every wound that he has he has now three wounds he can get rid of a monster pow wow that is a really really good power holy moly that really helps me out a little bit gets rid of that uh, three and opens up the board very nicely For some reason I'm always giving the brute the thumbs up. <laughs> I love killing stuff All right, the bard is gonna leave the armor to the sorcerer. I have a nice full hand I think I can have a good plan for what to do this turn. That is going to be a wound taken I'm now over my hand limit, but I'm about to cast something. There's the second set of armor Ooh. I think I took care of a lot of monsters, and then I have a little run of no monsters. So I'm going to discard this mismatch right there, and I am going to do the bard's lesser green power, which is inspire. All players may swap a card from the hand with a card in the discard. All right, so first of all, the sorcerer is actually going to discard this uh, swirly over there and try to match up and get a blue. This is a great way to mold your hands so that we can get some more banishings going. So now we have a swirly going uh, in the discard. They both need swirlies <laughs> and there's only one in the discard. There's only six total of each individual card. 
So what's going to happen is we are going to take this or this red and we are going to find a red square to go with it. Actually, as I look, there is no red square in the discard. I'm going to get this going. Uh, the, the Bard's re uh, green power with the upgraded one is really, really good. It is choose a wound. All players may discard wounds of that type. That would reset the Brute and also heal the Bard. So I'm going to set that up to try to get that triangle next turn. So the Brute is going to set up, discard this card, and get his banish power going. Way to go, Bard. It's a lot of thumbs up, man. I love this game. All right, it is time for the Sorcerer, and the Sorcerer is set up for a big turn. Man, that Bard, uh, by allowing those uh, flips in the discard, I, I uh, unlocked a couple of really good turns. So then they are going to acquire their third blue square. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna acquire the armor too. The armor uh, increases stamina. So stamina is this number over here and the stamina is really super low. Uh, and I have an armor for the brute over there. So we are gonna protect the biggest and the smallest. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so then, uh, so that's good for the sorcerer. Let's get some more monsters out here. Uh, let's hope I don't get a one out here. That would be unfortunate. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, the wand is basically a wild, so that's really nice. Uh, and I am going to use the power of the banishing again to banish this one. So now I have two cards in the banishing. Actually, that's wrong. I have I should have three cards in the banishing. So uh, there you go. I'm not doing that bad. <laughs> Ugh, there you go. There's another three for me. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of like two thirds of the way through the deck. The first time I have three uh, banishings. That's actually, I don't think that's bad. Uh, I think my goal is usually like five plus in terms of banishings in the first round. Uh, this is a bit, uh, this layout is a little bit light. On banishings, there are other characters that can uh, discard that can banish multiple cards at a greater cost. So I'm just like managing the board at this point, trying to get as, as many little banishings as possible. All right, so I have a lot of options for the brute. They are definitely going to banish something, but uh, it looks like first of all I need to take this armor. I'm not going to mess around. I mean, the brute is so good with wounds and having an extra stamina to play with a little bit more wounds have more monsters coming so they are going to take the armor just like the sorcerer i'm going to take those two into my hand and replace them top to bottom all right and now well that worked out for me pretty good because i want to keep those triangles around because i already have one and i'm going to use the three cards to banish this red square and now I have four cards in my banishing. Let's get another one, another swirly. Wow, the bard is set up for another banishing. That's amazing. Very nice. All right, so uh, there's some good stuff happening in my hand right here. I got two triangles off of green and three, uh, two Red squares, can't do nothing about that. And two blue circles, I'll go ahead and pick up a card up in a second. I am going to take that, unfortunately, that has to happen, but I did create two uh, sets. Let me go ahead and replace that in the rows. And what I said I was gonna do, I think I, I can hold off on this just a little bit. So I'm gonna put that to the side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three cards I'm going to cast. So the Bard's uh, Improved Charm Green ability says, Choose a wound. All players may discard all wounds of that type. I'm going to choose one. And that resets everything. So I'm sure the Brute will be able to build back up again, but he was getting pretty close to uh, his maximum. So I figured just get this reset going while I had a chance. The Bard also heals a little bit too and I have my circles for the next round. So I think that's gonna be uh, a good move long to longer in, in the longer term. It is now the sorcerer's turn. She is sitting on two red cards. I think I'm going to, so there's so much going on at this point. Uh, I don't wanna take that green swirly because the bard can uh, banish that green swirly. 
Uh, and there's just a lot of different uh, combinations that are none of which uh, really uh, do maximum <laughs> the stuff that I want. So I'm actually going to go this way. Uh, I get a wand, which is nice. I'm going to use that as a wild at some point. And I am going to use the lesser red power on the sorcerer. Well, first of all, let me go ahead and replace. Okay, not so bad. Probably I have a couple of monsters on the bottom of the deck over here. Uh, the red power is swap an undead with a card from the discard. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. And I'm going to replace you with that to set up the brute for a future uh, shenanigans, and then a sorcerer has just the one blue card left. All right, it is Bow the Brute's turn. Bard is going to set up and get that swirly, which I forgot about when I set that up. Boo! But it was worth getting the three out of there, so even then, it's fine. So the Brute is going to do begin their wound pile up once again. So then I'm going to take that and that. Hopefully, I can get a third triangle next turn to be able to fire off that awesome power that just kills monsters. Fantastic. So then we got more monsters coming. Yep, more weenies. And then, so this is, there's not much that I can do at all. So I'm kind of stuck with the basic powers. Uh, trading is no good. There's really not much that I can do in terms of manipulating the board to somebody's advantage. Ugh. Oh boy. Um, let me just switch these and this. Maybe somebody wants green. Who knows? <laughs> so the bard is going to pipe up and say, Redcon, put that back. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> he needs to be able to, to take stuff. So he is going to, he pipes up and he says, nope, uh, we're not going to do it that way. Uh, we are going to do it this way. He does want green cards. His, his green powers are really good. That's what manipulates the board so well. And so he's going to take these green cards like that. He is going to oh, get some monsters out there. Oh, look at that. Okay. That sets up the sorcerer pretty good. There's also a shield. And we are going to banish right there. Green card. And that sets me up with my kind of self-judge threshold, which is five cards in the banishing before the end of the deck for the first time. And I have a little bit of a rainbow, but at least I have this one to work on with the bard and some greens as well. All right, it is a sorcerer's turn. And as luck would have it, I could do the easy thing and just take those and banish the lowest level undead to give me six, which I'll feel really good about. However, because of the action economy of the game, you actually want to use these cards. Get them in the discard so that they are there, come out again for another use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shield first, and then I'm going to take this card second, and I'm going to use the shield to discard this. They both go in a discard pile, and there's so few cards left that I'm going to reshuffle next turn. I will see them again. And then I have the third card, and I'm going to give out one, two, and then reshuffle. Look at, look at that. Uh, and what that let me do is put the shield in the discard. I did not, was not able to get the wand in the discard, unfortunately, so I'm going to only have use, one use of it. But I think I'm okay. I am going to use that one, those three, as a, a triangle. And I am going to banish the lowest level undead, which is going to be right there. All right, so that is, yep, from the Void to the Banishing, that's six. Uh, six in the Banishing is very good for the beginning. All right, so I did reshuffle during the turn. Uh, one thing I did mention that as I did shuffle four Strength Monsters into the pile, so we're going to start to get the four Strength Monsters. I had set this up for the Brood a while ago. I am going to take this and get him going on some more Red Thunder, Second Wound. Let's see if I get some strong monsters out here. Yep, that's pretty strong. And that's not terrible at all. 
uh, getting rid of a three and a two uh, with just this power is excellent. So I have two wounds. I get to get rid of two monsters. Fantastic. And I have some lots of red swirlies going on so that other people can do their matchup power. So that's what's left. All right, so this is what the bard is going to do. This is what they have. Uh, I could go for that uh, bread over there. And the bard's improved red power is all players may place a card on top of a discard. That's pretty good, but not as good as it could be. And also the sorcerer doesn't have a card. So I don't, I'm not in a rush to get that one done. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, better part of Valor, just take some cards that puts me at 8. So I have to keep that in mind that he's at 8 because I'm actually not going to use a power. So let us just put some stuff out there. Okay, I can work with that. I'm actually just going to heal because having that 2 there is annoying. So we are just going to heal that. All right, so the sorcerer really has just nothing going on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a one level wound and we're going to get a couple more monsters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I got two blue cars. There's really not much, not much at all that I can do with it. What I want to be able to do is I want to set up the bard. The bard has two squares over there. There's a square up there. Want to be able to take the square with minimal damage so that I can discard this swirly. That's unfortunately, um, or banish this swirly. So I need to get those out of the same row. So let's go ahead and just do that. So that there's two options to take this one, the bard will take it without having to get rid of the swirly. All right, so retcon, the brutes uh, piped up, <laughs> said, let me at him, do that swap. Go ahead and do that. That's the good part about a game without an event deck or an event turn. Uh, you know, as long as the other person doesn't actually go, I can, you know, kind of retcon and figure out what the best moves are, but, but staying legal, that's the important part. Okay, so we are going to do that. That's what the brute wanted to do. He's going to take that wound, and we are going to hope that we get some fours out here. That's not a four. That's a two. I'll take that. And that is a triangle. Okay, uh, the sorcerer can work with that. We are going to use... The swirlies over here, uh, Bob Brute has three wounds, so he's going to get rid of three monsters with his upgraded frenzy ability. And now I'm going to get the fours. You watch. <laughs> that's not a four. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Uh, at least I cleared the board up a little bit. So, well, way to go, Brute. All right, so by hook or by crook, I was able to get the bard in an advantageous position. They have a ton of cards, and they're probably going to have to discard at the end of the turn. But I don't see any other way that I can get this uh, blue that I need without eating up the green swirly. Let's see if I get another green swirly. That would be nice to kind of hurry things along. I did not get a green swirly. I did get my blues. Three blue squares. And the bard perform play all green swirlies to the banishing. So I now have three swirlies in the banishing, which is actually pretty terrible. But I have seven cards in the banishing, so that's not a bad thing at all. And it looks like I'm the sorcerer is going to set up for another banishing. Fantastic! All right. So, but the bard does have to discard, and it looks like the weakest I have right now. Oh, wait a minute, the bard does not have to discard because uh, I went from 10 up to, or I grabbed three cards, I used three cards, I don't have to discard a thing. Never mind! Sometimes you get boned, sometimes the game walks you right into exactly what you need. So then that's a wound. That's not, doesn't make me happy for the sorcerer. Their, their salmon is now four, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and. Ooh, there's my first four. Very nice, though. We are going to take these three blue cards for the Sorcerer. We're going to banish the lowest level undead, which happens to be a three. Very nice. Wow. Uh, not only is that a banish, it definitely takes a powerful card out of the deck, which is so good. Wow. So I have eight out of ten banishings, and I am <laughs> actually doing really, really well. Uh, so happy with this game so far. 
Uh, I should be able to squeeze out the tenth one. Um, yeah, <laughs> I should. We'll see. All right, so we have the brute going. Sorcerer only has a little bit. The bard has a little bit of a rainbow over there, but the brute has a decent little power that they can do with their green. He has kind of like these crazy brutish healing thing going on. But first of all, let me go ahead and replace what's there. I better jump on this good uh, board luck and take advantage and get the banishings in while I can. So then we got triangle, triangle, triangle. There you go. We're going to discard that. And this is battle cry. For each wound, you have discarded a wound from any player. So we are going to hearten the sorcerer. They are going to get rid of these two. And while I'm at it, he's going to hearten himself. It says any player, not any other player. Very specific. So the brute is going to do healing. Not only is he a killing machine, he is a healing machine too. Brute MVP. Actually, they're all MVPs. I love every single character here. All right. So the bard is going to be up to some shenanigans. So as you remember, I have a lot of... I have a lot of cards, <laughs> uh, but we are going to take advantage of those breads. So we're going to use that to cast. I'm going to take these in hand, which means I have eight cards again. Wow, holy moly, there is just not a much opposition coming from the deck so far. Uh, that is still eight cards. So then let's go ahead and take stock of what's there. A couple swirlies. Then the rainbow, and then a, a rainbow of other stuff too. But I'm going to use this. The power of the bard, the improved power is confuse. All players may place a card on top of the undead. Fantastic. So I am going to put this card right there. I am going to, because I want the brute to have it. And then I'm going to put this card there in case the the bard comes up again i don't think they're set up too much to banish right now but that you know who knows uh when that comes up and then the bard is going to lighten up their hand and put does not have a swirly to put down but just gonna put that right there so then uh, we haven't really encountered this before. What happens is uh, when somebody takes from the row, they take from the cop card, a top card, and they reveal the monster underneath. But at least this gives me a little bit of board coverage uh, to be able to have a turn where I can just take freely. Uh, so I'm setting up the brute to do my ninth banishing, and we're just going to have to see about the tenth. All right, so the bard has their usual complement of cards. The sorcerer is going to take these three cards. And I'm going to reveal some monsters again. Ugh, there's that four. But they're going to use the, the power, the green power. They are going to create a... They were going to use the green power, but then I read it. Uh, it's imbue. Create a wand by placing a card from your hand into any player's wand slot. Normally very powerful, but I only have three cards. I don't have a card left in my hand in order to be able to cast it. So I'm just not going to do anything, am I? Uh, so... No use resting, no use trading. The brute is already set up, unless, unless they want to take a wound. <laughs> That's hilarious. I just set the boot up to get another wound. <laughs> cool. All right, we are definitely gonna do that. The brute has his third weeny little wound. Ooh, I'm starting to get some heavy hitters out there now. But I'm not that afraid because I'm going to do my ninth banishing. So this is right there. According to the Brute's power, play a card, a red card into the banishing. That's going to be a triangle because the Bard already has two swirlies and is going to set up for a third one. We'll see what happens. Oh, okay. And if I can get the Bard to... Uh, well, it looks like I'm a little bit far away from the Bard. So I have nine and not very close to 10. So even though it looks really good for me right now, ugh, <laughs> I could get gummed up. It's happened before. All right. So you can see what the Sorcerer has. The Brute has nothing. Of course, and <laughs> the Bard has the usual complement of lots of cards being very, very protective of the Bard in this game. Going to use the Swirlies. We're going to take across here. 
I'm going to take these two. Uh, the bard now has two of these blue swirlies. We're going to set up for a third or maybe have the sorcerer give the bard a wand. And that would be the third. And that would be really good because there's a green swirly out there. Uh, okay, so that get, that does it for the bard in terms of their take. And then get some more monsters out here. We are going to use this power. Everybody is going to put one card, or they can put one card, out on the board. That's not what's going to happen. Uh, so that's confused because everybody either doesn't have a card or they want their cards. <laughs> Uh, so everybody can draw a card. So we're going to use the lesser power, luck, and they can discard any undead, sir, any undead that they get. So the sorcerer's card is going to be a four. That's just basically a kill shot right there. The bard's card is going to be a three. That's going to that's going to be discarded, and the brute is going to get a thing. That's actually just as effective as like a board kill. So holy moly, the bard is just doing all sorts of awesome. Everybody's an MVP in this game. All right, if I need this to go well, if it doesn't go well, then I won't win. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see about that. So the sorcerer is going to take from this middle row, going to take a wound. Let's see what I get. That's not promising. That is promising. Oh, baby. Okay, good. Uh, so that is, ugh, that's actually not good at all. <laughs> Uh, well, well, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to do the thing that I was going to do, which is going to take these three cards, and then I'm going to take that and create a wand with the imbue power, the lesser green power from the sorcerer, and we are going to give it to the bard. The bard now has, uh, so this is in their wand slot, let's just say it's that, and they have the three circles necessary to banish those two and win the game. My goal, though, is to be able to clear a path for the bard to be able to take something without dying. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was worried about. The board's a little bit flooded right now. All right, so because this is the last turn, a hope for the last turn for the Brute, he is going to, uh, to kind of just do a noble sacrifice. Uh, so he's not going to be able to use this card. Uh, what he's going to do is going to take these three monsters. These three monsters, for the first time in the game, I'm actually going to flip to the other side, which denies him his powers. He can only use the terrible powers. So let's see. Okay, that's promising for the bard. That's not promising for the bard. Blech. <laughs> that's not great. Uh, but so he is not even going to be able to rest and heal anything. So he has four, five, se seven, ten out of twelve uh, wounds. So that is that's unfortunate. But he is going to use his trade power to clear space for the bard to be able to take a row without dying. All right, just to remind you, here is the bard's hand. They're gonna take their usual complement of lots of cards with no wounds. That really doesn't matter. Just letting you know how full the board can get with monsters. Uh, so we are going to use Swirly, Swirly for blue, and a wand which is wild. We are going to banish these two, and we are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 cards in the banishing for the win. I hope you enjoyed that game of the banishing. You can make it a little bit harder by using fewer items, or if you want to make it really hard, no items at all. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's a little bit too ridiculous. Um, I... I just have a lot of fun. I've played this game a lot. I know the characters. I know how they work. I know uh, what kind of to do. I, I, don't, I, I might have played this game over 20 times at this point. So uh, please, uh, this game is out of print. So if you want to trade for it or if you want to, uh, you know, just put out a call and see if somebody is giving their copy away, uh, go ahead and do that. I recommend that if you like co-ops and card games, this game is not for everybody because it's so puzzly and kind of mechanical. But for me, I just hit all of my sweet spot. I love playing this game. Had a real pleasure bringing it to you with a, a fresh playthrough. So this is Jason reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.